Hello everyone and welcome to the FreeNAS YouTube channel. In this video tutorial, we're going to cover creating datasets and configuring snapshots after you've already set up pools on FreeNAS. A dataset is like a directory or folder in your storage pool. When a user or application accesses the dataset, they will only be able to view or modify files that are in that dataset. Users can view or edit files depending on the permissions of the dataset and of the files and folders therein. We will talk about dataset permissions in the next section. A dataset gives you a bit more control over how its data is stored than a traditional folder would. For example, each dataset can have different compression, deduplication, or quota settings. These settings can be applied separately from the rest of the file systems. Just like with folders, datasets can be nested within one another. Nested datasets can either inherit properties from their parent dataset or be set on their own with unique properties. First, go to Storage and then Pools. Click the arrow to expand the pool. This will show a list of datasets on that pool. It will also show any ZVols that you may have created for iSCSI shares. Both ZVols and iSCSI will be covered in a later video. Next, click the three dots on the right, then click Add Dataset. Give the dataset a name. I'll call mine My Dataset. We recommend that you leave the compression level as LZ4, which is both capacity efficient and performs well. Choose the share type that matches the type of system you will access the share from. If you click Advanced Mode, you can define a quota for this specific dataset. When you are done, click Save. Next, I'm going to make a ZFS snapshot. A snapshot preserves your data exactly as it was the instant it was created. Go back to Storage and then select Pools. Expand the pool to show a list of the datasets. Click the three dots on the right for the pool or dataset you want to create a snapshot for, then click Create Snapshot. Give it a name. Checking the recursive box will set it to include child datasets of the chosen dataset. Then, click Create Snapshot. Once the snapshot is created, the file system state at that time is preserved. As the live file system data is changed, the snapshot will remain static. The snapshot will only consume disk space equal to the amount of data that has changed since the snapshot was taken. For example, if you snapshot a dataset with 100 terabytes of data, the snapshot initially takes up only a few kilobytes for its metadata. If you then change one gigabyte of data from the live dataset by deleting it or modifying it, the snapshot will take up one gigabyte of disk space. Now I'm going to show you how to restore your volume to that snapshot. Before performing this step, note that doing so permanently deletes all data added after that snapshot. Go to Storage, and then Snapshots. Here you will see a list of the manual and automatic snapshots that have been taken. Select the snapshot you want to roll back to, and click the three dots. It will ask you if you want to continue with the rollback. Check Confirm, then click Roll Back. An alternative to rolling back to a previous snapshot is to clone the snapshot. You might do this if you need to retrieve old data but do not want to undo all changes since the last snapshot. The cloned dataset can be deleted once you are done retrieving data. Select the snapshot you want to clone, and click the three dots, then click Clone. It will generate the name of the original snapshot with clone added. Click Save to continue. You'll now be taken to the Pools window. When you clone the snapshot, it creates a dataset with a copy of what the snapshot of the dataset contained. Note that this clone is writable too. Clone snapshots are also a great way to create test environments with existing data. If you don't want to manually create snapshots every time you want to preserve your dataset state, you can take snapshots automatically. Go to Tasks then Periodic Snapshot Tasks. Click Add. You can choose a pool or dataset from the drop-down list that you want to create an automatic snapshot for. Choose the lifetime and frequency of the snapshots. Make sure the Enabled box is checked here. When you are done, click Save. You should now see an entry under the Periodic Snapshot Tasks. In this example, they will be created every hour from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. They have a lifetime of two weeks before they are deleted automatically. Thanks for watching this tutorial video. For more information, visit ixsystems.com to learn more about FreeNAS and our company, IX Systems. Be sure to check out our other tutorial videos on our YouTube channel. FreeNAS is the open source community edition of the IX Systems TrueNAS product family, a comprehensive line of powerful unified storage products for organizations of all sizes. With its Flash-based architecture, powerful ZFS file system, and award-winning support, TrueNAS Systems provides secure, scalable, and flexible high-performance storage for virtually any application and budget. 
To learn more about the TrueNAS product family from iX Systems, visit us on the web at ixsystems.com.